Now let's add a database. In this one again, we're going to use a pre-configured image in the same way that we did with Nginx. And so again, uh, if this is going to be a MySQL database, but I don't want to call my service MySQL. I'm going to name it after what it does, which is database. Um, but I'm just going to shorten that to DB. I think that's not ambiguous. And so the way that we did this with our Nginx was we just went straight and got an image. So we're going to do that here, image. And so now we need to have a look what images are available to us. Let's go over to Docker Hub. This is the MySQL Docker official image page. Just going to scroll down and have a look. I'm on the tags tab here. Just going to scroll down looking for something fairly recent. So it looks like version 8 is the most recent version at this time of recording. And so we'll get this one here, 8.0. So that will be MySQL colon then 8.0. Next I'm going to do a volume mapping again. So this will also be referred to as a mounting. And the reason I'm adding uh, this here is just in case I'm working on something and I create some data, I don't want to come back and see that that data has gone the next time I run Docker Compose up. And so by creating this volume mapping here, it means that I have a way of preserving my uh, development data. But the way I'm going to do this is a bit different from the last time. So here I did a mapping directly from a folder in my project. I don't want to do that. I'm going to let Docker decide where to do this and the most efficient way of doing it because it's not files which I actually want to be part of my project and not something which I want to be adding to Git Ignore. And so the way that I'm going to do this here means that I won't actually have to do that and Docker will just take care of handling where it puts that data. It'll be optimized for my system. So I'm just going to call this my SQL data. The location for the mapping inside the container is fairly important and that location will be var, V-A-R, then lib, L-I-B, and then MySQL. And while I remember, I need to go and create a volumes key at the same level as where we have our services key, volumes, and then MySQL data. And if I just leave it with an empty value, then like I say, Docker will figure out the best way and the best place to put this data. But the most important thing for us to know about this is that our data will be preserved in between each time that we spin up Docker Compose. Okay, so the next one will be ports. Again, another one which we've used before. This needs to be inside of quotations, I think. And so I'm going to map mine to 3306, which is the default for MySQL. If you already have MySQL on your host machine and it's already running, then you'll need to choose a different host port. So the host port is one on the left. And so you can change it to 4306 or anything like that, just to make sure that you don't have any clashes. I, don't, I do have MySQL on this machine, but it's not currently running. So I'm just gonna leave mine as 3306. The next one we're gonna look at is something called restart. And so this is quite common for a lot of containers. You want, you'll want to make sure that they're up and running all the time. There is an option to say always, but I tend not to use this in my development environment because it sort of becomes like a hydra and I can never kill the container. Uh, I think a best strategy for development is to use this one here, unless stopped. So this means that it'll restart. So if anything goes wrong, it'll just restart unless stopped physically by ourselves. So I think this is a good setting for us. We'll stick with that. Next, we need to pass some information to MySQL, such as the user, the password, and the database. And we can do that using environment variables. And we add those using the environment key. This is something that we're going to touch on a little bit more when we go and add some environment variables to our Docker file. But basically, we declare some environment variables, give them some values. These will be passed into the container, and MySQL is smart enough to know to be able to read those environment variables to configure things the way it needs to. I'll not make you watch me type them all. These are the ones that you're going to need to have. You need to spell these exact because this is exactly what MySQL is looking for. So MySQL root password, MySQL user, MySQL password, and MySQL database. They are the basic ones which you will need in order for this to work. You don't have to use the same values I've used, use your own. If you want to know a bit more about these variables and what they do, again, come back to the MySQL 
page on Docker Hub, click the overview tab and then about halfway down the page you'll see this environment variables and it has a uh, description of what they all do and how they are used by MySQL. And that completes our setup so I'm good to go and run Docker Compose up again. Docker Compose up hyphen D. And so the first time that you run this, what will happen is the same thing as when you went and got your previous images from Docker Hub. So when it went and pulled the Nginx image, it will go and pull you a MySQL 8 image as well. I've already got it on my machine. I have a MySQL 8 image because obviously I have a little practice run through before I record these things. I want to test that connection and go and add some dummy data. So I've opened up my uh, database client. I use Table Plus, not an endorsement. I just find it really easy to use. I've entered my credentials and the details, so the ones that you need are these, host 127.0.0.1, so localhost, uh, port 3306, the user is the username, which I use the environment variable here, my SQL user, and the password is what I used here, secret, and the database is what I used here, docker php, so user, password, database. Those are the five pieces of information that I need. I've tested the connection. Table Plus is telling me that that works, and so I shall connect. I want to add some tables and some dummy data which I can use here. So uh, the functionality in Table Plus, I can import this, import from SQL Dump. If you don't have this functionality on whatever tool that you use, then you can just copy and paste the commands and I'll leave the SQL files as part of the repository in a folder called SQL. So inside of Docker PHP, you'll see them inside a folder called SQL and the file is simply called docker-php SQL. So I'll click that and I'll import that. Okay, Table Plus is telling me that's been successful. Refresh, and so you should see two tables. One with languages, very simple table, just two columns. And the other one is translation with some basic translations from English to the target language. So I've kept things nice and simple. Like I say, this isn't about building an application. It's about how you actually piece it all together using Docker. And here is that file inside of the project. So inside of SQL, docker-php SQL. And then you can just copy and paste the commands to build up those tables and add some data.